In the very first immunology video where we talked about nonspecific defense mechanisms, we said if we had some type of a pathogen, let's say it's a bacteria, that our phagocytes can recognize either proteins on the bacteria, or maybe if it's a, it was some other type of pathogen, some other marker on the pathogen. It doesn't know what type of pathogen it is, but that's enough for the phagocyte, and it'll engulf, it'll engulf the pathogen. So let's say this is a phagocyte. It, you know, somehow one of their receptors touches one of the proteins that's on the surface. Of this, of this bacteria in this case, and says, "Gee, that's not a good thing to have around," and so it'll engulf it. So the membrane is just going to surround, is going to surround the pathogen, and, of, and this part is going to go in. It's going to kind of pinch in, and the pathogen is going to get surrounded and get engulfed, phagocyte hosed by the phagocyte. So the end product, we saw this on the first video where I talked about phagocytes, is we're going to end up. So then the memory is going to be completely around. This is going to pinch in and bubble around this thing. And so we're going to have the pathogen sitting inside of the phagocyte. It's going to be surrounded by a membrane. That membrane is called a phagosome. And we learned there's different types of phagocytes. It could be a macrophage, a macrophage, could be a neutrophil, could be a dendritic cell, dendritic. Dendritic cell, and we have it like this. And then we also saw in that video that it's not just done. The macrophage doesn't just digest this thing. You know, that by itself is very useful. It got this bacteria out of the way. If this was a virus, it got that virus out of the way. But it does even more than that. It takes that and then it lyses it or it breaks it up. It doesn't have to actually use. Doesn't have to just. Uh, well, it, it breaks it up. It, it, there are several ways it can do it. But the bottom line is, is it processes it. And let me. Let me draw that. It'll break up the pathogen. And we saw in that first video on phagocytes that we'll actually have a lysosome bond to it and dump all sorts of particles that are going to break up and cut up this uh, bacteria, in this case, into its constituent molecules. Maybe we could draw that. So it's going to come here, and it's going to dump all of its contents and break it all up. And then the leftovers, so some subset of the leftovers, particular chains of the peptides, and remember, proteins are long chains of amino acids. Polypeptides are short chains. So you take short chains of those, and they're going to bond to special proteins. They're going to bond to special proteins. And this is essentially the topic of this video. So let's say they bond to that special protein, bond to that special protein. And then those proteins get transported, or get to the membrane, or the outer surface of the cell, and they present themselves along with the piece of the pathogen. So the end product after we've phagocytosed this pathogen is that we have the phagocyte will look something like this, and it will have these it will have these antigen presenting proteins, I guess we can call them, that had bound to parts of that original that original pathogen. So let me do it right here. So this right here. So it has a little bit of the original pathogen on it that I do in green, right here. And these proteins right here, these are called, and it's a fancy word, and I talked about it in the previous video, these are called major histocompatibility, histocompatibility, histocompatibility complexes. Complexes. Or MHC. MHC for short, MHCs. And when we're talking about uh, 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 phagocytes, or you know, macrophages or dendritic cells that are particular cases of phagocytes, the major histocompatibility complexes that they present after they've digested this molecule, this is an MHC class 2. So let me write this down. This is an MHC class 2 protein. It might seem like I'm really going into the minutia of what these proteins are, but we're going to see this is key for activating other parts of the immune system, especially the cell-mediated parts of the immune system. So this was the case with a macrophage or a dendrite. They engulf something, they chew it all up, and then they, the parts of the chewed up thing that they ate, they attach to these MHC2 proteins, and then these MHC proteins are go to the top surface of the cell. The same thing, or actually not the, quite the same thing, a very similar thing happens with B cells. A very similar, so if we have a B cell, let me, yeah, that's a good color, B for blue, but we know B 
stands for bursa, but it could stand for bone marrow just as well. Let's say we have a B cell, and it's got its membrane-bound antibody on it. And remember, it's very specific to that B cell. And so all of the membrane-bound antibodies, all 10,000 or so of them on this B cell, they all express, express the same variable part. So this is a particular B cell. So remember, this was nonspecific. When we talked about phagocytosis, these guys just said, hey, you're a bacteria, you're a virus. I don't know what kind you are. I'm just going to eat you up. You look shady. I'm going to eat you up. I don't know what type you are or whether I've seen you before. When we're talking about B cells, we're talking about the adaptive or the specific immune system. And so these, the variable ends of these membrane-bound antibodies are specific to certain parts of certain pathogens. To certain epitopes. Remember, epitopes were the parts of certain pathogens that these specific chains can recognize and bond to. So let's say that we're dealing with a virus in this situation. And let's say the virus just happens to bond to this B cell. Remember, there might be other, in fact, there definitely are tons of other B cells around, tons of other B cells around, but their variable portions, the variable portions on all of these other B cells, and Actually, let me do them in different colors to show that the variable portions are all different. And that's what I always find amazing about B cells, is that even though they come from the same genetic line, they have their genes have been shuffled around in their, in their development so that they can produce billions of combinations of these proteins, but, or, or, or the variable ends of their antibodies. So let's say we have some virus. So let's say it's well, let me say it's a bacteria. When I did the other B cell example, I said we're dealing with viruses. But let's say some bacteria, some new bacteria, and it's and just some part of its surface just happens to bind to only this B cell because this B cell has just the right combination. So some part of his surface binds just to that B cell right there. And that part of the surface that binds, remember, that was called the epitope. That's that, pro that part of the, of, the, of the pathogen that binds to our variable sequencer. It won't bind to this B cell or this B cell, because they have different sequences here. But it binds to this B cell, and then that starts the activation process. We'll go into, sometimes this, can all, this by itself can, can get the B cell activated, but you normally need help from helper T cells, and we'll talk more about that. And we said, once this happens, once you get activated, or the activation process starts, this guy actually gets engulfed. And I didn't talk about that in the last video, just because I didn't want to go into too much detail. So this, this whole thing gets engulfed by the B cell. By the B cell, and then when it gets activated, it proliferates. It proliferates itself, and you normally need the T cells there. And some part of them become plasma B cells. Some part of them become memory B cells. So these are memory memory, and then you have the plasma B cells. And remember, the plasma B cells just say, gee, I've been activated. I'm just going to produce a ton of these antibodies. So the plasma B cell will just produce tons of these antibodies and start spinning them out so that they can attach to more and more of that pathogen and just mess them up in different ways, either tag them the greens the pathogen, tag them so that other macrophages or our phagocytes eat them up, or tag two of them so you bundle them up so that they can't operate properly, whatever. I'm not going to go into detail on that. That's when it gets activated. But the interesting thing is, is that the B cell will also do what the phagocytes do. The B cell will also take this guy in, will also take this guy in into the cell, into the cell, you know, maybe he's initially attached to the antibody. And break him up, break him up, take pieces of this, take pieces of this pathogen and attach it to MHC2 proteins, and then present them on the surface. So a B cell will also present the antigen, will also present the antigen. So this is also an MHC2 complex, a major histocompatibility complex. And just so you know, histo means tissue. So this is related to whether something is compatible with the tissue in your body. And we'll talk more about that and how it relates to transplants and all of that. So this is also an MHC class 2. So in, in both cases, whether we're talking about B cells that recognize a very specific pathogen, that, and it could be a specific virus, a specific protein, a specific uh, 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 bacteria, or in the cases of phagocytes that just say, oh, you look shady. Let me take you in. I don't know what type of bacteria, or virus, or protein you are. But in either case, they both engulf them, take pieces of them, cut them up, and present them on their surface in a complex with the major histocomp 
compatibility complexes. So, vi so, so cells that do this are called professional antigen presenting cells. Professional. This is, what this is what they do for a living, although they do other things, as we've seen. This guy, the, the phagocytes eat things. The B cells uh, generate antibodies or memories so that they can later be activated to generate antibodies. But these are called professional antigen presenting cell. And the antigen in question is this little piece of, of the actual, of the actual uh, of the actual thing that you're trying to track, that little piece that we could, the little actual part of the pathogen, that's what the antigen. So it's presenting the antigen. It's professional because it does this. It takes antigens from, or it takes it takes pathogens from outside of our of our uh, or in the fluid of our system, and then engulfs them, breaks them up, and then presents them. Now, there are also non-professional antigen presenting cells, and in fact, most cells. Are this, and in fact, even these guys. So actually, I'm going to wait for the next video. I realize all of my videos are getting long. So you're probably thinking, gee, what are these? Okay, so what? These guys, in in either case, engulf them, cut them up, present them. What is it good for? You'll see that these are these these MHC2. These are what are recognized by helper T cells. So it's, it, it'll all form part of the puzzle of of how our immune system works. In the next video, I'll talk about MHC1 presenting cells, which is pretty much all body cells.